Hello everybody, welcome to AnyCast TV. I know today's video is very different, but I'm a little bit disappointed and sad, and I wanted to explain a major passion of mine that has become disappointing to me. You see, I grew up on Disney. I grew up on Disney to the point that I was going to go to their school where they teach Imagineers and cast members how to be Imagineers and cast members. I loved the Disney parks, and I still do to a degree, so I am very passionate about this issue. The issue being Tiana's Bayou Adventure, and why this failed. This is a lengthy history over the course of four years, and it's a controversial one. So strap in for the ride as I present the facts of the matter and give you multiple reasons why this ride has failed in such an abysmal way. Now I want to say this before our video continues any further. I am not trying to push an agenda leaning to the right side of the, of the political aisle being the Republican side or the left side being the Democrat side of the political aisle. The reason I have to say this is because some of the verbiage and some of the things with this ride itself are very socially political issues. I am just presenting the facts and so let's continue with the video keep that in mind just the facts may 25th 2020 was a very dark day in american history one month later on june 25th 2020 disney announced that the ride splash mountain would be rethemed to a more inclusive ride four years later on june 28th 2024 this ride did come out Let's rewind, because if you've been online, you know that virtually everyone is let down by this big ride. But why? Well, let me take you back to 2020 for some context here. 2020 was a year full of terror. The COVID-19 pandemic hit and everybody panicked. And in the midst of all this, George Floyd died and the entire world witnessed it on May 25th, 2020. The Black Lives Matter movement grew bigger and bigger than ever as the media showed us a narrative of all cops being evil and racist in, of course, the light of the incident. Many people started to react to this, and so the defunding the police was on the rise as a movement, and protests as well as riots broke out in the streets, all in the name of George Floyd. Disney understood that they needed to take a stance and one quickly, so they decided that the once beloved ride Splash Mountain would be rethemed. Splash Mountain was opened to Disneyland on July 17, 1989. The story of this log flume ride came from a movie that was actually based on some children's tales. On November 20, 1946, a film titled Song of the South was released. This film takes place during the Reconstruction Era, and if you don't know your American history, this is after the Civil War, and let's just say some people in the South were still a bit racist and mad about how that war ended. The film tells the tales of Uncle Remus as he's an actual physical character in the film, and a little boy named Johnny befriends him for some elderly wisdom and advice. In the film, Uncle Remus tells us about Br'er Rabbit, Fox, and Bear, and well, shortly after the Civil Rights Movement, this film was kind of censored by Disney. Why, you might ask? Well, there are racist connotations of African Americans in the film, and I actually know because I've seen the film itself, literally the only way you can get this is by going onto sites and either pirating it or finding it through like the internet archives out there. It's basically been erased from all of existence because Disney has decided that this is bad for their image and that they do not want to portray the themes and things said in this film to everybody. So they silenced it, but they did have this ride go on because, well, it focused on the cartoon characters, the pure part of the film, if you will. The film was shown to be a harmonious look at the Reconstruction Era, which is historically inaccurate. And yes, racial slurs were used in the film. So when the Black Lives Matter movement arose, this ride had to be changed in Disney's eyes. Come June 25th, 2020, Disney declared that in these times concerning the death of George Floyd, they reconsidered maintaining 
Splash Mountain, so they announced that Tianu's Bio Adventure would replace Splash Mountain. Now at this time, the Tianu name for this thing was not known, it was just known that it would be Princess and the Frog re-theme. Tiano, of course, being the princess from Princess and the Frog, the hit 2009 film featuring the first ever African-American princess. And this film, in my eyes, is amazing and is instantly a Disney classic. And the music, the music of this entire film is some of the greatest you'll ever get from Disney. Now, since this decision to change Splash Mountain was made in response to George Floyd's death, they had to make it with Princess and the Frog, since they were paying respect to the black community. But when this news broke, the Disney fans were a bit split. Some people called this decision woke, others said that this is great, and I think most said it could work, but they were torn over destroying Splash Mountain. And that final group right there is where I fell into. So we can see that since there wasn't overwhelming excitement, this ride was doomed from the start, which meant that the Imagineers really had to hit it out of the park to make this one a classic and to appease the majority. Now let's look at the very problematic timeline here. Way back in 2018-2019, a concept for a princess and the frog ride drifted out there. Come June 25th, 2020, exactly one month after the passing of George Floyd, Disney took the opportunity to make their Princess and the Frog ride into a new Splash Mountain ride. They released this art with the announcement, and then there was no word until 2021 when the construction begins. Then, a year later in 2022, a teaser for the ride came out as well as the announcement of a 2024 release date. In 2023, the name of the ride is released as Tianu's Bio Adventure. When this was released, teases of the story were dropped as being a continuation of the film. But there's a major problem here in my eyes. The film actually ends with the villain Dr. Felicier dying and a restaurant opening. Then this year, just a few days ago, on June 28, 2024, it was released to a whole four years after this entire announcement. Now let me just preface this by saying, in July of 2017, Disney announced Galaxy's Edge, and in 2019, this entire land was released at both locations. One ride took four years to build, when all they had was the skeleton of this old ride that they were retheming with Tianu's Bayou, that being the four-year ride. And then in two years, we saw Galaxy's Edge become reality as it opened an entire new themed land that had some very advanced technology. Now, we will look into the real problems with this ride and why it is awful. I think that there are four main reasons for this ride being a failure. First, this ride was set up on a response to a political movement made to destroy a classic loved by all. The decision was made in the aftermath of the passing of a man whom some respect and others do not. A solid 50-50 split, I'd say. And when your ride becomes a reaction, we know that these reactions are only temporary. I'm not saying that nobody cares about George Floyd today, I'm just saying that the response that came out of that horrifying video, they're not as prominent today as they were in the summer of 2020. So when you know it's going to take you four years, I think that's a little bit unwise to base an entire classic ride to be reworked into this. Second, the ride was announced a whole four years before the release, with Galaxy's Edge and almost every other big project Disney has ever done. They announced those in a good enough time frame to get the public hyped up about it, but also so the public could be like, hey, I know when I'm going and it's not too far out. For Galaxy's Edge, that was a six year project, and we only had to wait about three to see it come to full fruition. This, in my opinion, was a massive problem with Tiana. First, you have your base polarized over heavily polarizing political issues in a culture of very hostile nature when it comes to politics, and then you are destroying a beloved classic for this new ride. To add the fuel to the fire, you ever so lightly drop information on this ride over four whole years. 
well with galaxy's edge yes it was closer to about two three years that we had to wait but there was lots of information about galaxy's edge we were getting a lot of theories you know the star wars community was really excited the disney community was very excited and this was during the entire sequel trilogy so it was very relevant to have this entire galaxy's edge come out and well we got a lot of little glimpses into galaxy's edge i'd say way more than we got for the tiana ride here thirdly the ride itself is shallow and this might actually be the biggest reason this ride flopped when i watched this ride video i was severely disappointed yes the animatronics are very impressive but this ride was built with minimal animatronics no antagonists and very dull scenes this ride would have been helped greatly by a good story and a great villain. The actual story here is we are trying to get the critters to the grand opening of the restaurant, and that is it. Hey, there y'all are. Lewis is up ahead. Let's join him and find a band for our celebration. Literally, the story of paint drying, which is a legitimate film, is far more interesting than anything that this ride presents to us. Because, really, every single Disney classic ride has a compelling story. Think about, you know, the Haunted Mansion. Or maybe even something as a more modern classic of Indiana Jones. Or Frozen Ever After. Or Pirates of the Caribbean. They all have compelling stories. Even Winnie the Pooh the ride has a compelling story compared to this. And it's such a shame because Princess and the Frog does have a compelling story. And they could have created a really fun new original extension of that story. But instead they are just trying to drive home the point that there's going to be this restaurant. And I don't know. I said in my reaction that there was a restaurant. I'm actually not too sure now if... They are making that restaurant. I know that was talks earlier on to connect it to a restaurant, kind of like the Ratatouille ride, except with the Ratatouille ride, the entire thing is based on cooking. The entire film is, so they kind of built the restaurant and ride coinciding with each other. And so it makes sense to have a Ratatouille restaurant for the Ratatouille ride since the entire Ratatouille film is all surrounding cooking while Princess and the Frog is you know a very nice look at New Orleans and then it has a interesting ending where we get the restaurant opening up and yes that's kind of a plot point throughout the film but I just think that Ratatouille has far more to do with food than Princess and the Frog and I think in Honestly, in both scenarios, it's a little bit greedy of Disney to just build a ride to make a restaurant so people can spill out their money. But the Ratatouille ride handles this way better with a more interactive and fun story. And also the Ratatouille ride was something at Paris Disneyland or Disney Euro, whatever they call it over there, Disneyland Paris for a very long time and then came over to America. But the final reason this ride really failed is one that might be uncomfortable for some our culture yes our culture the culture surrounding disney itself is decaying at best disney has made flop after flop after flop disney has played very heavily in politics to the point where florida governor ron DeSantis has battled them over these politics that they play into disney has made it clear that they have an agenda and their numbers for disney plus do show this as they have been plummeting because people don't want to watch over politicized content it's one thing to watch a film that is a political commentary but when that becomes your children's entertainment that's not super cool with most people then we have to just talk about our economy our economy is wildly inflated and trying to go to a theme park these days is ridiculous the inflation and especially for disney because disney knows they can get away with a high price disney already is priced pretty high out there but now with inflation it's just gotten worse and even throughout this entire infla inflation and pandemic era we have actually seen the disney parks staff become less great We've seen those weird videos where it's just a trash hole of a park and we're, we're not going to get into that, but that could be another contributing factor here. So there you have it. The most recent disaster of a Disney Imagineering anything project, really. 
Just last year, the Star Cruiser was shut down and that was a really big disaster. And guess what? This YouTuber made a four hour video detailing the disaster. So maybe some other day somebody will make a very in-depth disaster video once we get more uh, impressions on this ride. Do I think that the Tiano ride will be shut down? No, I really hope they don't shut it down because like I said in my reaction to it, I don't hate it 100%. I'm just severely disappointed that it is shallow. Most content creators out there have said it is shallow and that it has really made them sad to see such a great concept of a ride become shallow. And that is the story of Tiana's Bio Adventure and why it has failed and why the internet is all over the place about this failure of a ride. Disney, if you ever want to get better at the amusement park thing, the theme park thing that you guys really invented and become the theme park giant like you once were, you better get ready because Universal is getting far better at it than you guys are and you guys need to start delegating a lot more time into being imaginative and not making shallow rides. Because if you did not know, Universal has some really big lands coming up that will absolutely destroy Disney World. The Universal Florida campus uh, theme park, I think, will actually destroy Disney World. And that could be an entire video for a different day. But with that being said, let me know what you guys think about everything and the entire decision to change Splash Mountain. Have you guys uh, liked this ride? If you guys went on it, did you like it? If you guys just watched the POV like me and have seen your favorite content creators out there reporting on it, what do you have to say about it? Are you severely disappointed like I am? And with that being said, peace out everybody. Have a great day.